Wise men say only fools rush in, but I can't help from. Check me out. I learned this song. I can't help falling in love with you. Totally learned it. Po totally playing it to you. Making you have all the feels and everything. But I have this problem. And it's that soon, a really good friend of mine, he's Elvis impersonator, he's coming over. And he wants to sing the song. And he can't sing it in B flat. He says he's got to sing it in Elvis's key. So i got to put it in D for him. And... I, that's a problem. How am I going to do it? I, I don't know about that. I mean, it's kind of hard, right? No, you guys, that's not going to happen. I don't know any Elvis impersonators. If you're out there, call me. I really don't though, but it happens sometimes. You're somewhere and an Elvis, I'm just kidding, not an Elvis impersonator, but somebody might come up to you and say, Hey, do you know whatever song and you say, yeah, I know that song. And they'll be like, can you play it in A flat? And you might say, I don't know about that. That's a problem. We've, we've got to take your musicianship to the next level. We've got to just bump you up a little bit. That's what I'm here to do today. Once you've learned a song and you feel like you've got it and you can play it and you can sing it on your guitar or on your piano, you've got to do a little bit more work than that to increase your musicianship, the thing that you've got to do is to learn to analyze that piece of music that you have learned. Now, I'm mostly just talking about popular music today. I'm talking about pop and rock music. And I've chosen this song because it not only has a one chord and a four chord and a five chord, which almost every piece of popular music has, but it's got a few more interesting chords as well. So we can dive in just a little bit deeper in, you know, musical content with this song. There's one thing you have to be able to do to keep up with me today, and that is to know your major scales. I say it all the time. It's one of the most important things you can do to be a true musician is to know all of your major scales. Minor ones help too, but major is darn important. So uh, if you're just out there watching, you know, and you don't know if you know your major scales well enough, I'll tell you, hey, Susie, play me an F sharp major. <laughs> Not Siri. Sorry, I missed that. <laughs> I didn't say Siri. Play me an F sharp major scale. And you have to be able to just play it. And if you're out there, Dougie, and I say play me A major, you've got to bust it out without even thinking. You've got to be able to play your major scales, all right? So, so that you know, because I'm going to say things today like, all right, in the key of B major, what's the four chord? And you're going to have to think in your head, B major, okay, I know the fourth degree of the scale is an E, so it must be an E chord. Right? You've got to keep up like that. So major scale is super important. I'm going to use my brand new manuscript paper that I'm kind of plugging the Amy Nolte Music edition of the Musician's Notebook. I'll show you why I like it so much while we're doing everything for the lesson today. This notebook, real quick, it's got my jazz Bible for everybody right here. It's got perforated edges. The front part of the book is staff paper only, but the last part of the book is lined paper and staff paper facing sides. The first thing I'm going to do is to pretend like I only know this song in the key of B flat major. That's the key I played it for you in originally, right? So well, I'm telling you right now, I could play it in, in any key, but you're going to be able to do that right after this too. I hope so anyway. So the first thing to do is to take, you know, your key that you're in, if it's B flat major, what we're going to do is we're going to write out the notes of the B flat scale. This is a way that makes it just a little bit easier. It's not that I do this every time, you know, but, but it helps. So we need to write triads for every degree of the scale so that we know what the diatonic chords are. We have to keep in mind that there's a B flat and an E flat in this scale and that's all. So the triad that we can build on a B flat is B flat major. All right. So I'm just going to write a B flat major. For C, it's a C minor. 
All right. That's because to build a triad using these degrees, we just play one, skip one, play one. So we go C, skip one, play one, skip one, play one. And it's C, E flat, and G, and that is C minor. I'm going to do the same for D. D, F, and A, that's D minor. E flat, G, and B flat, that's E flat major. F, A, and C makes F major. G, B flat, skip the C, D is G minor, A, skip the B flat, C, and E flat is actually A diminished. That's the first step. The next step is for me to play the song and write out what it is that I'm playing. All right, now this, this part of it, We're just going to assume that, that you know the chords to the song. So I, I do know the chords to the song, right? So, so I'm going to tell you that the first chord is B-flat major. Wise, and that's for the first two beats, right? We're in 4-4. Four, four. So what we do is we call that the major one. It's just a capital Roman numeral one for two beats, all right? So we write it at the first part of the measure. The next chord is D minor. Man, that's over here, right? We've got D minor. It's the third degree and it's a minor chord. So all we have to do is write a Roman numeral three in lowercase. We use lowercase for minor, we use uppercase for major, all right? The next chord is G minor. Say, we count one, two, three, four, five, six. You shouldn't have to count if you know your major scale, right? But that's G minor, so it's the sixth degree. And since it's minor, we're gonna write it in lowercase, all right? And that lasts for the whole bar. Only fools. Now we've got an E flat major chord. That is four and that's just for the first part then we go back to one rush now we have this f major chord in f is the five two three four but i e flat that's the four f is the five can g minor is coming up that's the minor six help and then we're going to go back to the four Falling in love, back to the one, with you, right? Now, now say I wasn't so well versed in these chords and I didn't know what they were. You know, even if you're going to, um, I don't know what a website is, like, you know, chordsonthefly.com or look up chords or tabs or whatever, you know, you could look up these chords. And then if you just, you know, if you've drawn out your diatonic triads like this, it's pretty easy to just go through and put Roman numerals on everything. Now this repeats. So that's cool, right? It just repeats. Uh, Shall I stay? Would it be a sin if I can't help falling in love with you? Then we've got the bridge coming up, right? Usually what we do is we'll call that B and we'll call this A. Now, the bridge goes to this chord, D minor. Like, and we've already determined that is the minor three, right? But it only lasts for the first part of the, of the bar. Like a river flows. And we've got an A minor chord here. So the A minor chord, you know, it starts on the seventh degree. And even though it's not diminished in nature here, it's just minor, we can just, we'll still call it just a minor seven chord like that. All right. And I know it doesn't really function in the seven kind of way, but that's, it'll make it easier. We'll just call it that for sure. And so we got D minor, like a river flows, A minor, and then it does the same thing again. So we can just do like this, surely, surely to the sea, darling, so it goes, does it again. Then we got back to the D minor, some things, and then we have a G chord, like a G7 chord. Now this is something we haven't talked about yet because, you know, this is not in the key. We've got a, that's a B just a regular B, not even a B flat. So what we have to do, if we have some kind of a chord that is totally out of the key, 
we have to think about, well, what's the function of it? Where is it going to take us? Where is this G7 chord going to take us? Some things, here it comes, G7, are meant to be. The place it takes us is to C minor, which is the two. All right, so what we have to do for a second, just for a second, is to think like we're in the key of C minor. And we have to think about what is G major to C minor. The answer is that it's the five, right? It's the five of the two. So the way that we write that is like this. All right, G is the five of C minor. Go back, we've got some things, G7. Oh, I didn't write the seven, we can do that. Are meant to be, C minor last the whole bar, and then we've got five, right, F. Oh, what did I do? You guys, what did I do? This should not be right there. All right, we'll pretend I didn't do that. It's, it's actually like a five bar bridge. It's kind of crazy. Um, but you know, we're also doing this song in four four and we're actually probably supposed to feel it in 12 A. I don't know. There are things that could be discussed here. I'm just gonna hop right down and write the last, actually, do we even need to write the last section? I don't think we do because I think it does the same thing. Take my It's going to do the A section again, you know, just one time this time. But for our purposes, this is about all we need. Okay, so now that we've got this, we kind of we can kind of just see what's going on. And it's nice. We can see that we've got this, this cool little departure. I think it brings a lot of emotion, don't you? Da, da, right off the bat. And we have a lot of normal stuff here, ba -da 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 -da, just four and one and five, four and five, and minor six, four, one. like this is really the kind of only interesting thing, and, and this too. But it's interesting and it's nice, right? So now what we have to do is think about another key. And let's go ahead and think about the Elvis key, which is D, all right? So let's go ahead and write everything in D, all right? Here's our D major scale. Again, uh, I don't know if I said it before, but we've got lined paper here, staff paper here. Oh my gosh. Makes everything so nice. I can make lists over here. I can just, you know, write without having to be all weird and write in between staff lines. I just write on normal lined paper. So nice. All right, so there's our D major scale, right? So all we have to do is just, I mean, these are, these are going to tell us what's major and what's minor, so we don't really have to write that out again. But if we've got these notes here in our head, I mean, I guess what we could do is just, we could just go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to make it easier. And then when we, when we see the one, we're gonna play D major. When we see the minor three, we're gonna play F sharp minor, right? When we see minor six, we're gonna go to the six, we're gonna play B minor. And if you know your scales and you know your chords, it's not that tough. Da, do, do, right, B minor now. Da, da. What's the four chord in D? There it is, G major. Da, back to one. Da, da. That's the five chord, it's A, A major, right? Now we go to the four chord again, it's G, da, da, and then A, da. What's this one? Minor, right? B minor. Da, four, back to G. Da, 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 one, five, one. And then here we're gonna go to the three minor, right? We already did it once, but if you don't remember, we can find the three. You guys understand? Yeah, well, let's say the seven, right? We go to the seven and play a minor chord, C sharp minor. C sharp, E, G sharp. Let's, let's see if it works. It will always work, that's the cool thing. So we've got F sharp minor. Like the river flows, surely to the sea. F sharp minor to C sharp minor, back and forth. When we get here, we F sharp minor again. Darling, so it goes some things. Now, we need to find what the five chord or the five seven chord of the two is. So what's this minor two, right? It's E minor. You could just count up five from E. One, two, three, four, five. There it is, it's B. So we're gonna go B7, right? We'll see how it fits. Some things 
things, some things, there we go, are meant to be, and it leads us right to the E minor, which is the two chord. And I should be able to tell you any key at all, and you should be able to do this for it. And it's the magic of Roman numeral analysis. That's what it is. As soon as you take a song, the chords to a song, and you put it in this kind of language, you can do so much more than you could do just with, you know, D major, F sharp minor, B minor. If you've got these numbers and you're kind of quick at it, you can just think in any key. And it's such a nice thing to be able to do. Nashville musicians kind of live and die by this. Now they don't exactly use Roman numerals like this. They've got their own number system. You can find plenty of videos on YouTube about the Nashville number system. It's fascinating. But all of those studio musicians that play all the country music, all you have to do is write out something like this, you know, with numbers and tell them what key and they're on it. And they'll just play it. It's automatic. Bam. I hope you can get automatic at this and that you can take the songs that you're already very comfortable playing, do a little analysis and start playing them in different keys. Like I said, it'll help you level up. Thanks for watching everybody. Don't forget, pick up one of these manuscript paper books. I really, really do like it. Themusiciansnotebook.com or you can get it at my website, amynolte.com. Darn sexy logo too, right? Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time on Amy Nolte Music.